continue our discussion with Margaret Wheeler. Hi, everybody. This is Beth again, welcoming you to the second half of the guest hour. Mrs. Wheeler is a lecturer in English at Tamagawa University. Let's see what she has to say. A special welcome to this month's guest hour, everybody. I hope you'll enjoy it. Before we get started with this second half, let me briefly introduce what we talked about last week for the benefit of those who are joining us the first time today. Mrs. Wheeler is from England. She's a teacher and is very interested in teaching English through drama. She's taught in England, Hong Kong, and is now teaching here in Japan. Mrs. Wheeler, welcome back. Thank you for inviting me again. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Um, today, I think we'd like to start out talking about your teaching experiences here in Japan. What is your comment on current English language teaching here in Tokyo, in Japan? Well, when I first looked at Japanese English language teaching, it seemed to me that most students learned to read and write English, but had little or no opportunity to speak their own thoughts in English. What they did say was a repetition of the words they'd read, and that wasn't always what they really wanted to say. Sometimes the only natural speech I heard was when a student said, I'm sorry I'm late, or I have to go now, or I don't feel well. Well, when I first began teaching here, my students just listened to what I had to say, and they never asked questions, and they didn't under when they didn't understand, um, well, even when they wanted more information, they still didn't ask. And they only answered my questions when they had a textbook with words to guide them. Well, my first impression, of course, was that they didn't want to learn English at all. And then I realized that they were frightened to speak in English because they'd never had any real practice in doing so. So somehow I had to remove the textbooks so that they would rely on their own thoughts. And I had to encourage them to find confidence to express those thoughts aloud and speak naturally in English just as they would in Japanese. But now that getting better, have they make uh, any progress in their performance? I think so, mm -hmm. and I think this is because I've been teaching through drama. Yes, and that's the second thing I was going to ask about, and I understand you're very keen on that uh, special method of teaching English through drama. Uh, Mrs. Wheeler, can you tell us, first of all, what you mean by classroom uh, drama, is it something like, say, play reading? No. In fact, that's exactly what it is not. Oh, isn't it? <laughs> no. There are no written words and mm -hmm. there are no textbooks in a drama classroom. It's got nothing at all uh, to do with reading a play aloud or learning the words or putting on a performance. Mm. You see, there's no audience either. Uh -huh. Nobody comes in to watch the play. But it's not so exciting to do, is it? <laughs> ah, well, my students think so. <laughs> because it's basically acting out different situations similar to those in real life, just as if they're really happening. Ah. No one prepares any words first. Um, nobody writes anything down, and nobody learns anything at all by mm -hmm. heart. Mm -hmm. um, the players make up the story as they go along, just like children playing. Uh, children play an imaginary game. They, mm -hmm. at the age of five, perhaps they pretend to go shopping. Mm -hmm. And some children will be the shopkeepers and some children will be the shoppers. And they make it up as they go along. And the story doesn't have a beginning sometimes and sometimes no end. Mm -hmm. It just rambles on. Still, students uh, need to have some knowledge of English. Otherwise, they just can't express themselves. So yes. they, they need to uh, learn to operate within the framework of their knowledge of English. So yes, they uh, do. do they need a large uh, vocabulary and uh, a good command, a good knowledge of the grammatical rules? Uh, no. Um, they need a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. You see, the students I teach know English quite well. Mm -hmm. They're university students. Mm -hmm. And so they've already acquired a lot of reading and writing skills, mm -hmm. but they've never spoken those words. Mm -hmm. So now they need that chance. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can use the same method, even with young children, mm -hmm. just with a few words. Mm -hmm. You can give them the words for uh, the things in a shop, mm -hmm. and you can put the objects on a desk. 
-hmm. and children can play out buying those things. How much is that? And somebody else can say, that costs two dollars. Mm -hmm. With the limited whatever. number of yes, words, you can, expressions. you can. Uh -huh. But with my students, of course, their vocabularies are already fairly wide, mm -hmm. but they never use them. So mm -hmm. that's what happens in drama. Well, you've started to explain a bit, but uh, could you be a little more specific about how you conduct your classes using this, uh, what shall I say, classroom drama method? Yes, I very much like to hear that. Well, yes, the difficult part of this is to introduce it because the students are very shy. Mm -hmm. First of all, they're not used to having a native speaker in the classroom. Uh, secondly, they're probably not used to acting with each other. Mm -hmm. They're used to just sitting in the same room and listening to mm -hmm. a lecture. Mm -hmm. So the first thing to do is to help them overcome shyness. Sometimes I give them a hat or a pair of sunglasses or a stick, mm -hmm. and then they can pretend that they're somebody else. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. that helps a lot. But one of the most successful ideas I have is to get them to talk in gibberish. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a little what? bit difficult to explain. English through gibberish. <laughs> English through gibberish, yes. Uh, ha, ha, ha. They make up a play in Japanese mm -hmm. just by saying, you are a policeman, I am a driver, and I've parked my car in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. And that they just do in Japanese. They don't work out what's going to happen in the play. Mm -hmm. But then they talk to each other in gibberish and act out the play with lots of facial expressions and hand movement. Mm -hmm. I know, you want to know what gibberish is. Yes, yes. Gibberish is just made-up sound, uh -huh. but the correct tone of voice so that people know what you're thinking. For instance, if two people have an argument, uh -huh. it would sound like this. And you know that they're fairly angry with each other. Uh -huh. They're certainly arguing. It's a tone of voice. So. It is. Uh -huh. And if it's a love scene, mm -hmm. it would sound something like this. Oh <laughs> so It's rubbish. Uh -huh. But the tone of voice yeah. helps you to understand what people are saying. What's going on? Yes. What's going on? Aha. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, so it's a way of breaking through immediately to the emotional level of language. Quite right, yes. Mm -hmm. You see, no, if they sense. act it out in Japanese mm -hmm. first, and then um, they've got to act it out in English, they've been thinking so much in Japanese, they find it difficult to switch. Mm -hmm. Now, the next step is quite interesting. The next step is a discussion between some of the class who watch some of the people playing scenes in gibberish. Mm -hmm. And um, the class will ask in English, are you a policeman? Mm -hmm. And the actor will answer, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. And the class, somebody in the group will ask, um, did you do something wrong? Mm -hmm. And the driver will say, yes, I left my car in the mm -hmm. wrong place. Mm -hmm. Gradually, through the discussion, mm -hmm. the actors learn all the English words that they're going to use, and then they do the play again, this time using English. So do you mean the audience will provide the necessary uh, expressions or phrases uh, so that the, the people who are going to act it out later on can... Uh, use those expressions and yes, provided they by the audience you mean yes. by way of asking questions quite right but they uh, don't realize that they're learning the English expression mm -hmm. and phrases because by asking the question in English the actor perhaps hasn't thought out the answer until he hears the question mm -hmm. somebody might say did you go to the police station and have to pay some money, a fine. Mm -hmm. And the actor may not have thought of that, mm -hmm. but he will probably say, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Then when he plays the play in English, he will make quite sure that he goes to the police station, oh, this is and it. the policeman will say, now you must pay a fine. Whereas when he did it in gibberish, he didn't think about the word mm -hmm. fine, mm -hmm. or going to the police mm -hmm. station. And oh. they don't, excuse me. I'm sorry, go ahead. And they don't know then uh, what's going to happen at the end of the play. Uh, they have to think of the, the, the uh, result. 
Yes, they don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. When they play it in gibberish, they just do a lot of movements and a sort of general idea of the story. Uh, Through the uh. discussion, they work out what they could do by the sort of questions people ask, the things they want to know. So they have to use a lot of imagination. Yes, they do. And do you think this approach can be extended to teaching English to oneself? I mean, in other words, uh, can students uh, use this method without the assistance of a teacher? Yes, yes, certainly. Mm. Because the, the basic idea is self-motivation. Mm -hmm. You have to think up your own ideas. You don't take the ideas just from the textbook. And um, I suggest that if any of your listeners would like to do this, First of all, you have to work with somebody else. It makes it much easier to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And uh, you imagine yourself um, to be somebody different and in a different place from where you really are. Mm -hmm. For instance, on a train journey, you and your friend might decide that you are two foreigners coming to Japan for the first time. And you can talk about what you see from the window, talking, of course, in English. Mm -hmm. Or you can pretend that you've just won a million yen and you've got to decide how to spend that money mm -hmm. because you must spend it within two days. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that causes a good argument, so that's good practice for your English. Mm -hmm. um, if I understand this correctly then, what you've done is you've put students in a role-playing situation and you very, what should I say, very cleverly taken the old technique of pantomime and combined it with this gibberish, this vocalization, so that they're playing a pantomime game and students are guessing what they've done, but they're vocalizing at the same time. Am I right? Yes, sometimes. Sometimes it's more like a pantomime. At the beginning stages, it's usually very, very funny and big gestures and people falling over and making lots of mistakes. Mm -hmm. Then, gradually, the students become more serious about it. Mm -hmm. And then they want to present exactly what happened uh, in the supermarket, or on the beach, or in the crowd, or in a disaster such as an earthquake or a typhoon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what are some of the major advantages of this method of instruction for the students, do you think? Well, I think the, the most advantageous part is that it takes away the pressure of the textbook. Mm -hmm. um, the textbook is very necessary for people learning English, of course. Uh, for learning new expressions and widening vocabulary. But the textbook doesn't prepare you to talk naturally to native speakers. When you talk to native speakers, you don't think out first what you're going to say, and they don't think out the questions they're going to ask. Uh, everything happens naturally, just as it does when you're talking to somebody in Japanese. Mm -hmm. And so they get into the habit of talking aloud in English and really communicating instead of just saying, hello, how are you, do you like living in Japan, they really get to know the person as a person, mm -hmm. and they don't come out with the stock phrases. Mm -hmm. Of course, if they come out with the stock phrases of the textbook, and the native speaker doesn't give the stock answers, mm -hmm. it can be very mm -hmm. difficult in mm -hmm. a conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it teaches them to be more flexible to speak more naturally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, that's very interesting and helpful. Well, Mrs. Wheeler, thank you very much once again for uh, coming and talking to us. And I'm afraid we're running out of time. Uh, so uh, let's hope that our listeners learned quite a lot uh, from listening to you. And uh, we hope we have another chance of getting uh, together. I'm certain that the audience found um, listening to you was just as enjoyable as we did. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. And everybody, this concludes today's guest hour, and be sure and join us again. Till then, so long. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>